Joe Biden has criticized Donald Trump's handling of the coronavirus outbreak as close to criminal. But the Democrat presidential challenge is making news in America for another reason. The FBI is accusing Russia of trying to undermine Biden's campaign. Addressing the Congress, its director, Christopher Wray, said his biggest concern is what he calls a steady drumbeat of misinformation that could undermine confidence in the result of the 2020 election. Seth Abramson teaches journalism at the University of New Hampshire and is also the author of a book, Proof of Corruption. And he joins us now. Good to have you on Newsday, Seth. What do you make of those comments? Well, there's a universal consensus in the U.S. intelligence community that Russia poses by far the greatest threat to the 2020 U.S. election. But the president, as he often does, rejects his own intelligence community's assessment and says without evidence that China is the biggest threat. But FBI Director Chris Wray was very clear that Russia is trying to hurt Joe Biden through what he called social media and influence operations. Interesting that it's Joe Biden. Why do you think that is? Well, the Kremlin actually began sowing disinformation about Joe Biden through its agents in Ukraine beginning in 2018. Uh, many of these agents, for instance, Viktor Shokin, Yuri Lutsenko, and Andrei Telezenko, have worked with Trump attorneys and Trump's allies in Congress to transmit alleged dirt about Joe Biden since then. So this has actually been going on for about 36 months. Your latest book, Proof of Corruption, focuses on trying to debunk the Kremlin uh, disinformation, uh, again, aimed at the 2020 election. Just give us some of the instances, again, to push you on the point you just made, um, on what you found. Well, let me focus on the main one. The primary false claim that the Kremlin is trying to sow as disinformation in the United States and that the president and his lawyers and, frankly, Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, who's running a probe on this, are trying to sow and that the Kremlin wants to see crystallized in the U.S. is that Joe Biden's anti-corruption efforts in Ukraine in 2015, efforts that actually were aimed at reducing corrupt Kremlin influence in Ukraine, were in fact somehow themselves corrupt. Specifically, Trump and his allies focus on the firing of Ukrainian prosecutor General Viktor Shokin, which actually was a consensus, consensus move that the entirety of the West supported. It was not just Joe Biden. Right. So from all this, you sense then that the Kremlin would rather have another term of Donald Trump than a Joe Biden presidency. Well, again, that's the consensus view of the U.S. intelligence community, whatever the president may say. But I think the important thing to emphasize here is that one of the former Ukrainian prosecutors general who Trump's attorney Rudy Giuliani was getting his information from about Joe Biden, a man by the name of Yuri Lutsenko, has since retracted all of his allegations against both Joe Biden and his son Hunter. But because most American voters don't know that, the president and his allies can still get some political traction by spreading what the U.S. intelligence community has made very clear is Kremlin disinformation. Interesting that he retracted them. Did he give a reason for that? Yes, uh, he actually gave an interview in which he conceded that he has a political mind and has political interests domestically in Ukraine. And he understood what Donald Trump and his agent, Rudy Giuliani, wanted him to say about Joe Biden. And he was trying to be accommodating. But he has since come clean, perhaps understanding that this is a competitive election and the next president of the United States could be Donald Trump or Joe Biden. So how does the FBI then go ahead and investigate allegations against um, Joe Biden if they ever pop up again um, regarding his businesses, especially if there are legitimate um, concerns about his conduct, either in wherever it might be, if indeed it's, con it's saying now that Russia is involved in disinformation? Well, we should be very clear in saying that there is no evidence whatsoever that the FBI is actually investigating any of these allegations. In fact, again, not just the intelligence community, but the U.S. law enforcement community at the federal level has made clear that these comments, this conspiracy theory that the president and his allies are spreading right. has no basis whatsoever, in fact. And very briefly, if you can, how does 2016 or how does this 2020 situation compare to what happened in 2016, where the Russians were accused of interfering? It's very similar. I mean, the social media and influence operations that Christopher Ray talked about are exactly what we saw in 2016. And then, as now, they are pro-Trump operations that the president clearly is trying to downplay by directing our attention as Americans elsewhere, specifically to Ukraine and to China. Seth Abramson, thank you very much. He teaches journalism at the University of New Hampshire and has written a book, Proof of Corruption.